how are the intersection of two straight lines intersection is always I would say it's always the same principle which is you have two things right in this case we have two straight lines and what you do with this uh, two straight lines is you set them equals uh, you equate them and when you do that you can resolve for a special uh, for a parameter or for a variable that's included in one of two or in, in one and then you will end up with a relationship or maybe uh, already with it uh, depends on which what, what type of exercise you're calculating with a straight line you'll probably end up with a parameter you can then use uh, and find out about the intersection point for example or it could also be that you find out that both straight lines are equal but the beginning of the procedure is always you have to set them equal and then you have to resolve and find out about the relationship between those two vectors or maybe they don't have an intersection point at all and you will all find out about this uh, after you started with this procedure so you say one straight line is the same as the second straight line that's your assumption and then you calculate then later in the procedure you will find out in which case or when this assumption is true when one straight line equals the other straight line that's the principle and I will show you in a second with an example how it works how to calculate the intersection between two straight lines this works the following. I'm going to show you the principle with an example. So we have given two straight lines which are minus 7 minus 4 1 plus u times 9 minus 36 minus 27 and just to remember you this vector is called the directional vector, this vector is called the support vector, and u, I'm going to show you in a second, u is just a number, it is not a vector, and you can see this obviously the, uh, uh, because it doesn't have a vector arrow on top, so it's just a number. But of course it's better if you define it. So we have h minus 2, 1 minus 5 times v uh, plus v times minus 85 215 and 210 so this is the directional vector this is the support, support vector and finally we should write somewhere that u and v are element r so not vectors just plain numbers so the, in principle it works like with two linear functions you the first step you want to do is you say g has to equal h when we want to calculate intersection points and obviously most probably there will be one in this case so remember this is the, this is the principle so not too difficult same with linear functions so sooner or later you should know when you calculate an intersection then you have to equal those two functions that you have been given so we just start, so it's minus 7, minus 4, 1, plus u times 9, 9 minus 36, minus 27, equals minus 2, 1, minus 5, plus v times minus 85, 215, 210. And then what we want to do is we put this vector to the right side. So we say minus, minus 7, minus 4, and 1. And we put the v vector to the left side. So we say minus v times minus 85, 215, 210. And so we just calculate it. We end up with, uh, first I write u, which is 9, minus 36, minus 27 then in this case I write plus and uh, write the minus in the vector so plus v times uh, 58 minus 215 minus 210 equals now this step we just did and we have this we can uh, those two vectors those two support vectors we can calculate together so 
So we end up with minus 2 plus uh, 7, in this case, which is 5. Then we have 1 plus 4 is also 5, minus 1, uh, minus 5 minus 1 is minus 6. So this looks a little bit nicer than this, and what, but we, we still have to find out what u and v are. And the way we are going to do this in, in this example, there's also an, another way you can just try to, to calculate it uh, in, a, in a different way, but I, I like to, to do this with a matrix, which is with a system of linear equations. So maybe I, I make a one step more so that it may be clearer to you. So we have three equations versus 9u plus 58v equals 5. Second one, minus 36u minus 215v equals also 5. Third step, minus 27u minus 210v equals minus 6. So we have three e uh, equations and what we want to do is, uh, to solve it, we use the Gaussian algorithm. And so we just write it as a matrix. 9 minus 36 minus 27. Then we have 58, uh, 85, 215 minus 215 minus 210, 5, 5 minus 6. So this is our system, our, our matrix. So we have uh, 1, 2, 3, three equations that we have to solve. And remember this is u, this is v, and the way we are going to solve is uh, this equation. Is, uh, you see 9 and 36, then you might remember, 9 times 4 is 36, so we can do something here. So we say 1a is 4 times 1 plus 2. So 1a, we just calculated this is 0. Then we might need a calculator, so 4 times 85 plus, in this case minus, minus 215, which is 125. 125, right side, uh, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 525. Then we, okay, maybe we make a step more, so we don't make any mistake. Minus 36, minus 215, 5, third equation, minus 27, minus 210, minus 6, Then maybe we switch to a new sheet of paper. And so what do we want to do now? We say 1b is 1a divided by 125. Why? Because when you calculate this with the Gaussian, when you calculate matrices with the Gaussian algorithm, the thing you always want to achieve is this uh, sort of step, like in this case, we, what we really want to achieve is something like this. Right, we have a 3 by 3 matrix in this case. So we have one information given that we actually don't really need. We just need two informations to fully determine those two uh, unknowns. But we have three equations given. So one we actually don't need, but it could also be that the, the additional equation tells us something which cannot be true, like one equals five or something, or which doesn't, which uh, makes trouble with other with one other equation. But uh, in the best case, when we want when we receive one intersection point, then it should look something like this. Of course, there are not zeros on the right side, at least not here and here, but there should be some number here and here, and then we know the value for u and v. So we try to simplify, we try to change our matrix towards this ideal matrix with uh, this kind of uh, ones that form st uh, stairs. So we just continue on the new sheet of paper. 
and remember what we just did. So we have 1b, what's that, we have 0, 1, and maybe you can calculate it in your head, 25 divided by 125 is 1 fifth, 1 fifth, and then we can already do the next step, which is uh, 2a, so what could we possibly do? We could say 2a is 2 plus 215 1b. And you can just write it down. So we have 2, okay, this stays the same, minus 36. And then here we just said uh, we can make the 0, so minus 215, of course, plus 215 times 1 equals 0, and what we still need to do is calculate the number here. So we have 5 plus 215 times 1 fifth, with 48. And actually we're almost done already, so it's not, it's not too complicated, it's just the numbers may look like here we have a fraction, not too nice, but in the end, if you calculate correctly, no big thing actually, you just need to practice it a little bit, and then it works quite well. So one last step we need to do is, we need to divide the second equation, the second line, by minus 36. We have 2b, 2a divided by minus 36, and we end up with 1b, we already had. And please note that you can exchange the rows, because you might already see, okay, that's not really what I said, because here we have the nice stairs, and I end up with having the 1 here, but this is no problem at all. I will have the 1 here in the second, and then I could, if I wanted to, I could just exchange the rows, but if you're a little bit in a hurry, you don't have to do it, of course, but the goal is always this nice stairs. But if now the second row and first row are, are switched, then it's also no big problem, and it's upside down stairs, whatever, but you need to have a 1 in each line on the left side of the of this line so that you can determine what is u and v for this case. So divided by minus 36 we end up with 2b, 1, 0 and 48 divided by minus 36 we end up with minus 4 thirds. Third equation actually uh, okay, we write 3a, and I'm going to show you what happens with the third equation, now I know. Okay, minus 4 thirds, and I save this value in a in my calculator. And the other value, 1 fifth, 1 fifth, uh, I save in b. And then I just put it into my last equation, just to have a try, because I already know the values, right? I actually don't need the third equation, but I have to make sure that the third equation is true at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I just put in the values, minus 27a minus 210b, and look what's, what comes out, minus 6, so I see. With the values I already found, the third equation is totally happy and I can use my results because all three equations are true at the same time with the solution I just found with one fifth and minus four thirds. So I can write this zero zero zero. I don't need the third line anymore. Uh, maybe you can write something like uh, three this for uh, what did we say? V equals one fifth, and U equals minus four thirds. Maybe you write something like this so that that your teacher knows what you thought and why you just wrote zeros. 
So we know u and v. Maybe you can write it explicitly. u is, we said, this one, this value in the first column, which is minus 4 thirds, and v is what? 1 fifth. This is some sort of intermediate uh, solution, but the final, in the final step, of course, we want to calculate the real interception, intersection point, because these are just values that we could put in here or here to receive the point, and now that's we are actually going to calculate the point. So we need our definitions of, of the straight lines again, and in this case, I mean, you could now calculate, you could take G, insert U, or you could also take H and insert V, and you should end up with the same point. In an exam, you can, it, I think it's sufficient, you just calculate one straight line, you end up with a point. If you have time, you can also calculate the other straight line as a proof, just to make sure that you really end up with, with the right intersection point. But it's not necessary to calculate both, because if you have done everything correctly, it is completely sufficient to insert U in G or V in H, not both. It's not necessary to calculate both. So, G is X. In this case, uh, maybe write it differently, we say maybe I intersection point is minus 7 minus 4, 1 plus u, now we know, minus 4 thirds times 9 minus 36 minus 27 and we can calculate that, so first we make some more steps minus 7 minus 4, 1 uh, we say plus plus, so we have 9 times minus 4 thirds, 9 divided by 3 is 3, so 3 times 4 is 12, minus 12. 36 divided by 3 is 12. 12 times 4 is 48. Minus and minus is uh, time minus times minus, minus is plus. So we said 48. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9 times 4 is 36. And minus times minus is positive. So this is what we end up. Minus 7 minus 12 is minus 19. 48 minus 4 is 44. 36 plus 1, 37. And then you can see this is our intersection point. This is the intersection point of those two straight lines that we have been given. And as you see, the principle is not too difficult. You just need to remember one thing, which is here which I showed you here in, in the red box. G equals H, that's the beginning, and then you can, then it's very, very straightforward, then you can just uh, calculate the right value for U and V. So you just equal both straight lines. Don't make any mistake in this calculation, it looks a little bit complicated, but it is not. Just equal both uh, straight lines then simplify everything, then you can make this uh, nice matrix and use the Gaussian algorithm to calculate it and uh, you've seen that it's, it's not too difficult, you just have to pay attention, maybe look here, I just noted 9 and 36, you can easily calculate, easily put it together and solve, like with 4, 9 times 4 is 36, so it's uh, quite nice at this point, but you just have to keep your eyes open for this kind of uh, nice numbers that fit together. And then we ended up with u and v, and we put, in this case we used u, put it in our straight line g, we could have also used v and put it in the straight line h, and in both cases we should end up in the, in the case uh, to calculate the, the intersection point with this one. So not too difficult, but of course, practice makes perfect. Thanks for watching. Practice makes perfect. Further exercises with solutions you can find on my website, which is www.worksheets.com.